Hello, my name is Gary White. Welcome to the Sunday morning service for Victorville United Methodist Church and the First United Methodist Mission of Barstow. We're glad that you could spend some time with us. We pray that you are well and would like to encourage you to share this video with anyone who may not have it easily accessible. You can find all of our videos on our Facebook page, United Methodist Church of Victorville, or on our YouTube channel, Victorville United Methodist. You can also find our service in audio form by calling 760-245-2529. God bless you. together with you again to welcome you to this time of worship. We are celebrating Pentecost, the second, the first Sunday after Pentecost. And Pentecost is an amazing celebration of the Holy Spirit. Today is a special day, Trinity Sunday. And that's when we recognize the wonder in our multi-faceted God. And so let us hold that wonder in our heart as we begin today with an opening prayer. God Almighty, we just thank you for this chance to worship and we call on your Holy Spirit, on its power, on its love, on its conviction to be in the hearts and minds of those who are gathered here at this time. We praise your name, O oh God, and we hear you deep in the whispers, deep in our hearts at those times when we most need you. We just ask you, O oh God, to be that transforming, amazing God that you are and to bless this time of worship, to bless the song, the prayer, the word, and the gospel message that has been prepared for you. Thank you, God. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Holy 
dwell in me Heal my soul Set me free Free to trust and follow you Calling me in all I do Holy Spirit, sing in me Set me free to love and serve you all my days with songs of healing, songs of praise. Holy Spirit, live in me, fill my being, set me free. The scripture reading for today comes from the book of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. This is in the New International Version. Jesus teaches Nicodemus. Now, there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying. You must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do not do you not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still, You people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, this beautiful Sunday morning, this Memorial Day weekend. Your message today is coming to you from Victorville United Methodist Church. Gosh, there's a lot of unhappy people in this world. I was speaking with someone a while back. They were sharing with me their insecurities, their fears. This person is so unhappy. He says to me, I always feel as if I'm lost. I would imagine most of us have felt lost many times during our lives, but to feel this way always is a terrible burden indeed. Toward the end of this life, the Apostle Paul was able to say, 
I know what it is like to be in need, and I know what it is like to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can personally attest to, the, to both of these feelings and have learned to be content either way. Contentment is what the world is striving for. It is what most every person desires. So why is this so elusive? Paul follows his statement up with, I can do anything through him who gives me strength. Contentment and the secret of being content is found in Christ and Christ alone. It's not something that we can attain from external powers. We will not find contentment in human institutions. We will not find contentment in trying to follow a certain guidelines for living or certain rules. It just doesn't work. It has to come from within, no matter the circumstance. It has to come from Christ and complete reliance on faith and in Christ's love for us. In our gospel lesson this morning, we came upon a man named Nicodemus. We are told that Nicodemus was a Pharisee and a member of the Jewish ruling council. It is also believed that Nicodemus belonged to a distinguished Jewish family, kin to a certain Nicodemus who was the ambassador of Pompey, the Roman emperor back in 63 BC. It is amazing that this Jewish aristocrat would come to this homeless prophet who had been a carpenter in Nazareth so that he might find the key to life and living. It would be like the Pope asking me, Art, how can I find God? Nicodemus was a Pharisee. He was one of the elite who dedicated their lives to keeping thousands of rules, to keeping every detail of the law of the scribes. And he was a ruler of the Jews, which is to say that he was a member of the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin was the Supreme Court of the Jews. Again, it's amazing that Nicodemus would come to Jesus at all. We are told that Nicodemus came to Jesus in the night when it was dark. The writer of the Gospel of John likes to use the symbolism of darkness and light throughout his Gospel. The situation, this situation, is no exception. Nicodemus came to Jesus as a lost man in the darkness, seeking the light. Who is Jesus? In Nicodemus's heart, there was a great unsatisfied yearning, a great unsatisfied yearning for peace and contentment. Nicodemus may have been an extremely successful man, but his worldly success still left him as empty and desperate as the rest of us. Perhaps Nicodemus felt as if he was always lost all the time. When Nicodemus came to Jesus, he told Jesus that no one could help being impressed by the signs and wonders that Jesus did. Jesus' answer was that it is not the signs and wonders that were really important. The important thing was that such a radical change in a person's inner life that it could be only be described as a new birth. We might tend to think that the idea of being born again has only Christian roots, but this is not true. As a matter of fact, 
This idea goes back many thousands of years. The idea was not a new, was not new to the people of Jesus' time. The Greeks used the idea of being born again in their mystery religions. And the Jews were, well, when a person became a Jew, they were regarded as having been born again. The sins the person had committed before the conversion were all done. And now the new convert was a new person. So the Jews knew the idea of the new birth, and thus Nicodemus knew it very well. The world today knows very well the term of being born again. It has been used by politicians and presidents and celebrities. It has been preached by about all of the television evangelists. But people have a friend or a family member who is self-described born-again Christian. Yes, this world, as well as the world of Jesus' day, is quite familiar with this term, born again. But unless it's experienced, that is all that it is, a term. A misused and misconstrued and misunderstood term at that. Many times, to separate up voting blocks, the media will use the term born-again Christians to divide one category of religious folk. Others are called plain old Protestants or mainline Christians or Catholics. Yes, the term born again is very misunderstood, even within the church. I remember when I was a kid thinking a born again Christian was somehow a second class kind of Christian. It was like they had been a Christian, had somehow messed it up, and had become a Christian again. Whereas everyone else had always been a Christian all along. We were better. We hadn't messed up. Anyhow, Nicodemus was a successful man. He was an extremely religious man, but he was not a content man. He did not have the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. How could he have missed it? John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, had been an Anglican priest for a number of years without having experienced the new birth firsthand. Of course, he was familiar with the term and may have thought he understood what it meant. But Wesley was an extremely agitated and unhappy discontent man who tried so very hard to feel as if his sins were forgiven, but he just couldn't believe it. On a dangerous voyage by ship, Wesley was scared to death. His knees were shaking. He was afraid to die and face the judgment of God. And on this ship, he came upon some Christians who had been strongly influenced by Martin Luther, and they didn't have a care in the world. They were singing hymns and happily praising God while the ship shook with the waves and was moved by the gale. They looked death in the face and were content and at peace. They fully trusted God. It was at this point that the 36-year-old and Anglican priest, John Wesley, knew for sure he was lacking something that these other folks had, an assurance of his salvation. Wesley had an unsatisfied yearning, even though he was a highly regarded Anglican clergyman and had been for years. A little while after surviving the trip on the ship, Wesley writes in his journal that he was coaxed by a friend to go to a certain Bible study on Aldersgate Street in England, where a person 
was reading Martin Luther's commentary on the book of Romans. And then Wesley writes, about a quarter before nine, while he was describing the change which God works in the, in the heart through the faith of Christ, I felt my heart strangely warmed. I felt I did trust Christ, Christ alone for my salvation, and for an insurance was given me that he had taken away my sins, even mine, and saved me from the law of sin and death. That was John Wesley's born again experience, and also the beginning of a great awakening, the Methodist movement. Do you know what it means to be born again? Have you given your life to Christ over and over, but it just hasn't made much of a difference? Is it hard to relate to the Apostle Paul who talked about a peace which transcends all understanding and a contentment no matter what the circumstances? If so, you may have been a lot, you may have a lot in common with Nicodemus. In Nicodemus's heart, there was a great unsatisfied yearning. It's as if Nicodemus said to Jesus, you talk about being born again, you talk about this, radic this radical fundamental change, which is so necessary. I know it's necessary, but in my experience, it's impossible. There is nothing I would like more, but you might as well tell me, a fully grown man, to enter into my mother's womb and be born all over again. You see, it's not the desirability of this change that Nicodemus questioned. That he knew only too well. It was the possibility. Nicodemus, was up against the eternal problem. It's the problem of someone who wants to be changed and cannot change himself. Can you relate? So Jesus answers Nicodemus by saying, flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. We human beings by ourselves are flesh and our power is limited to what our flesh can do. By ourselves, we cannot do much other than be defeated and frustrated. Can you relate? It is the universal fact of human experience, but the very essence of the Holy Spirit of God is power and life, which are way beyond human power and human life. And when the Holy Spirit takes possession of us, the defeated life of human nature becomes the victorious life of God. It's through Jesus Christ that we are born again. It is when Jesus enters in, into possession of our hearts and lives that the real change comes. And when Jesus takes possession of our lives, it's not only the past that is forgotten and forgiven. If that were all, we would just continue to take the same mess all of our life again. Instead, when Jesus takes possession of our lives, a new power enters which enables us to be what by ourselves we could never be or to do what by ourselves we could never do. There's a story of a man who had been nothing but a drunk his whole life until he was converted. His colleagues at work did their best to bring him down. Surely, they said to this man, you can't believe in miracles and things like that. Surely, you can't believe that Jesus turned water into wine. Well, the man answered, I don't know whether he turned water into wine and when he was in Palestine, but I knew, do know 
that in my own house and home, he has turned beer into furniture. The unanswerable argument for Christianity is the Christian life. No one can disregard a faith that is able to make a bad person good. The essential thing is to experience the power of Christianity. Are you experiencing the power of Christianity in your life? Christianity must be experienced. You must be born again. this time of worship. And we hope if it was meaningful to you that, that you will share it with someone else, that you will let someone else know how to watch it, or you will send the link, or somehow you will take the TV or, or take your laptop or whatever, it, or your phone, and let them know this message that God wants them to hear. And so let us close this time together. In a prayer, God, we thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for how your word changes us, how your word transforms us, how the power of your Holy Spirit energizes us when we feel we have lost everything. We haven't because as long as we hold on to you, you are there. Even when we drop your hand, you are there. You pick us up and take us. We thank you, God, for your power and presence in our lives. And we lift up our souls and receive this new, fresh beginning of being born again in Christ's holy name. Amen.
and now receive this blessing, this blessing of an almighty God who does everything for you, who is everything for you, and calls you to be everything for those that he draws to him. So go now and be that everything for those that God needs you to be for. Be that hope, that love, that transforming spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go and be a blessing. Amen. for being with us throughout this service. We hope that you are able to find it inspiring. If you would like to make a donation, you can mail it to the church address, 15150 La Paz Drive, Victorville, California, 92395, or to 404 East Mountain View Street, Barstow, California, 92311. You can also make an online donation through our church website, churchonlapaz.com or vvumc.org. Remember, you can also listen to our service by calling 760-245-2529. We thank you for any help that you can provide as we are trying our best to do what we can in these challenging times. Until next time, God bless you. <music>